Hey, how's it going? It's Howard from Kitty Caster FX. In this video, we're going to talk about the trim driver. And I'll go over a little bit of the origin and the architecture of it. Then we're going to talk about how to put this on your pedal board. And you'll see what I mean when I get there. And then we're going to go and go through each of the controls and uh, get you familiar with those. And then finally, gonna do a little bit of stacking. Gonna have a little pedal board set up with a few random pedals because the trim driver was designed to go towards the end of your pedal board and it'll act kind of like a preamp for your entire pedal board going into it as opposed to um, oftentimes people have preamps to boost in front of the chain. This goes at the end, sort of like your master limiter on your recording rig. Um, why do you do that? Well, it gives you control over the output level going to your amp, and it just makes everything sound nicer, like it was printed to tape or something. A little bit thicker, bigger, wider. And to that end, what we got going in this pedal it's a tremolo pedal, yes, but I kind of think of it as more of a, a preamp pedal that happens to have a harmonic tremolo free inside because what we got going on here is three JFET preamps running at 24 volts. So we got high warm headroom there and you got a drive and output control, which allows you to control how hard it pushes or how relaxed it gets. Just like I'm pulling back on the mic or I'm pulling forward on the mic. The drive control does the same thing for your entire pedal board. And it's kind of like a master volume. So you've heard of the EP3 preamp before probably. People make pedals with an EP3 preamp in it. Well, this little guy has three EP3 preamps. They're basically 24 volt JFET preamps. And how are they configured for three? Well, it's series parallel. So your guitar or your instrument hits the first preamp, and that's a full range preamp. And then it hits the drive control, which determines how much of the signal gets out. And then it splits into a Y. And then you have the other two EP3 preamps in parallel. And one is voiced low pass, and one is voiced high pass. So basically treble and bass. And then when you hit the LFO button, it starts seesawing back and forth to create the harmonic tremolo effect. So what you're hearing is low, high, low, high, low, high, going back and forth. So, um, harmonic tremolos, people often think generically uh, of harmonic tremolos as more subtle than like a regular tremolo because it's going low and high back and forth. And some people say, oh, it sounds kind of like a cross between a tremolo and a phaser and a univibe and a vibrato. And that is true. It kind of has sort of evokes all of that stuff. I took this one even closer to the Univibe thing because the oscillator in this, the LFO that makes it swish back and forth is actually a modified Univibe LFO. So take three EP3 Echoplex preamps and a Univibe LFO and you combine all that stuff and stir it up to make a preamp with the brown panel harmonic tremolo sound and the whole idea was to get those three things to work together and to get along and uh, I managed to figure that out and the result is this pedal so anyway we're going to do a controls camera overhead camera and show you all the controls but before we get into that let's talk about this pedal and how you might put it on your pedal board and you're like what's the deal well from the shop, it comes shipped 
with these rubber feet, which are great if you're just using it as a standalone, very sturdy and works great. But if you're going to Velcro this to your pedal board, these are little bumps there, so the Velcro is not going to, it's going to be too high for the Velcro to hit your, your pedal board. So we've thought of that and included with the case candy is a pack of screws specifically designed for this. So all you got to do to get this ready to Velcro is take your fingers and twist off the rubber feet because they're actually got threaded screws on the rubber feet integrated into one thing. And I'm going to take them off right here. Now there's nothing to change inside because this unit does not use batteries. What you do is just plug a standard nine volts, center negative, you know, your basic generic power supply that virtually all pedals use. And internally it converts it to 24 volts. And I tune the hell out of it um, to make it the response and the thickness and everything the way I wanted it to. So anyway, you don't need to take the bottom off unless you want to just look at it. So here, let's take a look at it. There's all kinds of good parts on there. It's all through hole construction. Yeah, you're seeing some of these big capacitors and I'm not doing that just for looks, although it does look pretty cool. I did it because all my experiments led me to this group of parts and uh, I didn't want to use surface mount because I haven't had good luck making those sound good yet. So there's the goods right there. But anyway, let's go ahead and tuck them away. So if you're going to do the Velcro thing, then you take these screws out of the envelope and you just screw that in like that. And as you can see, it's nice and flat now and you can Velcro it. So that's all there is to that. And um, let's go ahead and switch cameras and do a controls dive down. And I'll see you there. Okay, here we are. Here's the trim driver and we're gonna go through the controls here and then we're gonna stack these into it and see what happens. So what we got here is drive, speed, output, LFO bias, bypass and LFO. So the way to think about this pedal is the left side here is the preamp, drive, output, bypass. And then once you turn the preamp on, you have the option of also turning on the LFO, which is controlled by speed and LFO bias. So that's pretty much it. Left side preamp, right side is trim, but you gotta have the preamp on first before there's any trim. So let's hear it. So right away you hear that big fat JFET preamp sound. Let's try it again. Okay, so we got drive and output. So they kind of work like you would expect like on a master volume situation on an amp or something, except in this case, it doesn't get dirty or as dirty. but it does get really loud. So basically you can turn the drive down and the output up and it'll pull the sound back and give you more clean headroom, which if you're running a bunch of stuff into it, a bunch of dirt and stuff, maybe what you want. Or you could turn the output down and turn the drive up. So it might be relatively the same volume, but you're gonna get a much more pushed feel. And if you're not sure, just set it about noon-ish. Then when you turn it on, you get that subtle 
thickness and big smooth thing going on. So let's turn the drive up just a bit. Okay, now let's turn on the LFO. Ah, there it is. So the speed control is pretty self-explanatory. go fast down. I find that most of the cool stuff is on this top half of the dial and I tune it so you can get right to those in-between speeds. So this control, let me slow it back down, the LFO bias, and if you look at the LED, it'll correspond. So it's, at the lowest setting, it's gone, and then as you bring it up, you notice the LED is pulsing but it doesn't turn all the way off and then you turn the bias up and it gets a little bit more a little choppier and there's more off time and so what I like to do which is indicated in this black band here it's suggesting that you turn it low and what I do is I start at minimum and, and then bring it up just until it comes on. And so it never turns all the way off on either side and you get the most liquid sound from that. And then as you turn it up, it gets a little more on and off. And so if you want that liquid faux univibe type sound, play with the control right here in that low range. Nice and liquid. Or we can get a little choppier. Let's turn it up. Back down. Slow it down. So you can hear it pulsing. And then here you hear it. It's like it gets steeper. And this is a little bit shallower. But in the case of the trim driver, shallower actually means a bigger sound because it's the LFO is not turning each side off as much. It's not as steep. And so it's kind of like barely turning it off on the treble and bass as it's going through the pulses. You turn that off and go back to your preamp. So let's turn the output down and turn the drive all the way up and see what happens. So you can use it as a really burly boost for your amp.
Yeah. If you're running, I'm running a jazz master now, but if you're running like a hotter humbucker, it'll crunch just a little bit. Uh, more than that. Actually crunching the amp a little bit. Um, but it's, it stays together pretty long. It's like, kind of like a high watt, the way that breaks up, where it's just on the edges, but the inside is still clean. So I turn the drive down and the output up. So by working the drive and output together, you can get all kinds of textures, boost textures. Like I said, the drive control kind of pulls it back like you're going away from the microphone like this, far away from the mic, and then as you turn the drive up, it gets closer and closer to the microphone like that. Sort of the same feel, actually, because it pushes your whole pedal board more into the foreground. So speaking of pedal board, let's check out some stuff here. So I got an Analog Man Chorus here. Excellent pedal. I got the Groovy Wizard Fuzz Driver and a script Phase 90 that I, I think I modded a little bit. Uh, some nicer caps, maybe. Anyway, the reason I have these on here is to show you what the trem driver can do for them. So let's go ahead and hear the chorus. Now let's go ahead and turn the preamp on. So it makes it a lot bigger. And it's gonna do that for your entire pedal board. It'll make it as big as you want it to. Which is great if you have a pedal with a volume drop or like a fuzz that's got a volume drop and you wanna get it up there. Okay, now let's try uh, the Phase 90. The technical term is embigify. This thing will embigify things. Okay, now let's try the Groovy Wizard Fuzz Driver. Do this on top of it. much fun here so let's say you got a hot dirt pedal like a groovy wizard it doesn't have to be that though but um in order for it to sound good you just gotta crank it up right because some pedals they kind of deflate when you turn them down especially dirt pedals <laughs> It's huge sounding, and we can make it huger if we want. But how about if we needed to make it quieter? So we can just turn the drive down, turn the output down. So your dirt pedal is still cranked up like you want it to be, but you can control how hard your amp is being hit 
or just control your output volume because you're too loud on stage or maybe you got your full pedal board and the dirt pedals sound great where they are, but you just want to do some late night noodling. So let's turn the drive down and the output like barely on. And you can have fun. with your pedal board but without waking up the house and the neighbors because if I turn this off now so it's great for that think of it as like a output fader limiter for your pedal board and if you're like playing a show and the sound guy is saying turn it down but you can't turn your amp down because you lose your sound you can't turn your dirt, your dirt pedals down because everything gets deflated. So put this towards the end of your chain and this will help you. Um, you can turn things down and keep everything, your amp and your dirt pedals cooking like they're supposed to be. And then as the night goes on, you know, by the end of the night, everyone is drunk and everyone's ears are broken in so you can kind of crank it up I know what you're thinking. Okay, I'll do it. So you'll notice that um, we can throw a lot of stuff at the trem driver and the trem doesn't disappear. In fact, it gets just bigger the more um, stuff you throw in front of it. So stack as many pedals you want and hit that trem driver and I guarantee you'll have a great time. <laughs> Thank you. 
After all that goodness. Okay, so that's the Trem Driver, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, please comment down below in the YouTube comment section. And while you're down there, um, hit the like button if you like the video, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this from me. I'll be putting out videos constantly as we go forward and I'll be doing musical examples, different amps, different guitars, different combinations of other pedals, maybe some technical dive downs, get into the circuits a little bit more, see what's going on, some of the particulars and um, stuff like that. So until the next YouTube, I hope you're doing well and we'll catch you later. Thank you.